Welcome. We're glad that you're joining with us today. Just so that you know, it's a beautiful day in Sarasota. It's in the mid-80s. It's bright and sunny. Wonderful day to get outside and enjoy the Southwest Florida uh, paradise. So wherever you are, we hope that you're having a good day. And if you're not in Florida or in Sarasota at this time, we miss you. Uh, and we hope that God will continue to be with you and bless you wherever you are. During this period of COVID-19, I have read a number of articles uh, proposed about, is coronavirus a sign of the end of the world? And of course, there are some people, because of their uh, interpretation of Scripture, that they are excited about that possibility. Uh, they love to read the times and to look at the signs of the times and to try to project or predict when the end of the world will come. So I thought we would take a moment and look in Matthew chapter 24 as Jesus addresses uh, two or three questions that the disciples asked. And as they ask these questions, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to make sure that we not only understand Scripture, but that we do not twist Scripture uh, in our own misinterpretation or misapplication and therefore leave people with some mistaken notion about what the Scriptures uh, teach. Matthew 24 is a wonderful opportunity to look at some of the things that people will use to project or predict when the end of the world will be. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is with his disciples, and there they are at the temple. And the disciples are so enraptured with the beauty of Herod's temple. It took 46 years to construct, and it was the third time that the temple had been uh, created or constructed uh, on that site there in Jerusalem. First time by Solomon, the second time by Zerubbabel after the Babylonian exile period, and then Herod used uh, this opportunity as trying to create a name for himself and create a beautiful structure that would be a draw and would be a, a memorial uh, to him and his leadership uh, there in the area of Palestine. So in Matthew 24, as the disciples look at the beauty of this building, they pointed this out to Jesus. And Jesus, in Matthew 24, verse 2, said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. The idea of the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, <clears throat> was very disheartening to the disciples. They were discouraged, and so they asked the question in verse 3, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So as they asked this question about the destruction of Jerusalem and the return of Jesus or the end of the world, Jesus begins in verse 4 to answer that question first about the destruction of Jerusalem. In Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4, Continuing all the way down to verse 35, Jesus addresses that one topic about the destruction of Jerusalem. And this would happen within one generation or within 40 years. So in 70 AD, the Roman general Titus brought the Roman army. They surrounded Jerusalem and proceeded to destroy it. And over one million Jews were slaughtered during that time. And about 96,000 were led, according to Josephus, as captives uh, back to the city of Rome. So this was something that was extremely uh, demonstrative as far as its event in the history of the Jewish people. And in fact, it marked the end of any attempt to follow the, the principles and the precepts of the law of Moses, because with the destruction of the temple, the loss of the records for the priesthood, keeping the law of Moses became impossible from a practice of a religious nature. There was no priesthood. There could be no sacrifices. So in this section, Jesus mentions a number of things. In verse 7, he mentions that there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. In 2020, people have been noticing not only do we have this virus that seems like a, a plague or a pandemic. We also have had 
uh, earthquakes, and particularly here in the United States, in Alaska and Hawaii, which are rather frequent, but there's been earthquakes in Utah and Kansas and other places as well. So this leads to, again, generating more excitement. But of course, all of these passages about the false prophets and the false Christ and all of the trouble of when this destruction would happen, it already took place. So everything down to verse 35 has already occurred, and it occurred within that one generation. Jesus had even said that the gospel would be preached in the whole world. And Paul records in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, and in verse 23 of that chapter, that the gospel has been preached in the whole world. Interestingly, down in verse 34 and 5, as Jesus concludes the answer to this initial question, when will these stones be thrown down, not one left upon another? When will the destruction of this wonderful temple by the disciples view in their question, when will it be? And Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. So when we look at this, all of these things that Jesus mentions during that section happen because God is the one who appointed the times for that to happen. That the end of the Mosaic Covenant was done away with the death of Jesus, but the fact that it was still fading away, or as the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 8.13, vanishing, uh, was something that took place over a period of time until that dramatic exclamation of God allowing and permitting the destruction of the temple. And that closes completely uh, the practice of Judaism uh, at that time in 70 AD. Notice in Matthew 24 and verse 36, Jesus says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two men will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. On down through verse 51, Jesus continues to paint that picture of that unsuspecting, uh, that sudden event as far as the end of the world. When Jesus comes back, there are no precursors, no signs, no ways to be able to indicate when it will take place, just like when the flood started. It wasn't from any other uh, event or indication. Noah and his family were told to get in the ark. God shut the door. And then the rain came. For the end of the world, there's no sign. We're closer because time moves in one direction. So we know that we're closer than we were yesterday. But at the same time, there is no indication or sign that we can use to predict. That's what Jesus says. And anyone who tries to say that this virus or this earthquake is an indication is misinterpreting Scripture. They're missing the very point that Jesus said you need to watch and be ready. Our preparation for the end of the world, for the return of Jesus, is that every day we have the opportunity to make our relationship right with God, either by obedience to the gospel, by belief in Jesus, repentance of our sins, making that good confession before others, and then being baptized. When someone has been baptized into Christ, then their responsibility is to live faithful until death, Revelation 2 and verse 10. But the time is not something that we can predict. It's not something that we can know. But the Father is the one who knows His appointed time for those things. May God help us to live that we are always watchful and ready for Jesus' return. I hope that that helps us in answering the question that maybe some of our friends and neighbors have, or maybe some of their misunderstanding, making sure that we understand the Scriptures correctly. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave those things to watch for the destruction of Jerusalem, but we also understand that there are no signs or indications for when Jesus will come back. May we live 
in a constant state of readiness. May we watch and be prepared when Jesus returns. Lord, we pray that Jesus will come quickly. But until then, help us to be faithful, faithful to you, and faithful with the sharing of the gospel with all those with whom we meet. God, be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until we get together again for one of our devotionals or an opportunity to meet together, be safe, be healthy. God bless you.